I'm Carl from Apton. In this video, I'll be giving you a closer look at the QN85B series 4K Neo QLED from Samsung. I'll touch on the design and connections, sound quality, OS and smart features, the picture, and the differences between this one and last year's QN85A. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to click the link in the description after the video to see our latest pricing. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of our latest products. The QN85B, just like the 90B, looks fantastic. It's super slim, the bezel's almost non-existent, and it gets a center-mounted pedestal which helps it fit on narrower TV stands. For screen sizes, you have your choice of 55, 65, 75, and 85 inches, which is great if you're shopping for a larger mini LED TV, but if you need a smaller option, you'll want to check out the 90 series. On the back are all the connections. You get two USBs, optical audio, RS-232C, Ethernet, and an antenna connection with an ATSC clear QAM tuner, but no ATSC 3.0 tuner. There's also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, and of course, you get four HDMI connections that are all 2.1, and can handle 4K 120Hz along with variable refresh rates, which is great news for any next-gen gamers out there. For audio, all the sizes come with a 2.2.2 channel setup with 60 watts of power, which, just like the 90B series, actually sound pretty darn good for stock TV audio. There's object tracking sound technology to help the speakers follow the action on the screen, active voice amplifier to help you hear dialogue better, and Q Symphony that you can use with compatible Samsung soundbars. But the biggest audio improvement over last year is the addition of Dolby Atmos. But just like any other higher-end TVs, the picture's so good that the audio just doesn't match up well enough, so we do still recommend investing in a soundbar or a surround system for the best home theater experience. Moving on, the 85B still uses Tizen for its operating system, but this year's TV gets a totally refreshed full-screen Smart Hub homepage. It's well organized and it gives the user easier access to apps and suggested content than previous generations did. For voice assistance, this one's got Bixby, Alexa, and Google all built in, and it supports Apple AirPlay 2 and Chromecast. You also get the Samsung TV Plus app, which is great, especially if you're a cord cutter. It gives you access to about 150 different streaming channels that don't require subscriptions, and they continue to add channels, so the viewing options keep growing. It's also got multi-view, which lets you play two different sources on the same screen, so you could be watching a local game off your antenna and have a completely different game streaming on the other half of the screen. Then there's the picture, and Samsung really seems to be nailing it with their 2022 models. The colors are saturated and rich, black levels are deep, and coupled with the brightness of the mini LEDs, you're getting a highly enjoyable picture. You can even use the built-in smart calibration feature with a compatible smartphone to run an auto calibration using the phone's camera to tune in an even better picture without having to pay a professional. Is it exactly the same? No, but it still helps. In addition, you still get picture presets to choose from if you don't want to go through the extra calibration process. Lightbloom's handled well from directly in front, not quite as good as the 90B, but still better than last year's 85A. You'll notice it more as you move off to the sides, which is completely normal on an LED backlit TV. That being said, the 85B's picture does maintain its quality even standing off angle. It uses the same ultra viewing angle technology as the 90B, but the 90 seems to be a little more effective, kind of from what we experienced. These also get Samsung's Quantum HDR 24X, which provides substantially bright highlights that help HDR content look terrific. It can play back HDR10 Plus and HLG, but unfortunately, just like all the other Samsung models to date, there's still no Dolby Vision. Motion looks very natural, I didn't find any reason to turn on any additional processing, but you may want to test out the different settings to dial it into your liking. Upscaling worked well too, all the 1080p content that we played back looked great. For any gamers out there, the QN85B also gets the updated Game Hub. Just hold down the play pause button on the remote when you've got game mode activated, and it'll pop up on the bottom of the screen. From here, you can see how many frames per second you're running, adjust the input lag speed, you can even cater the picture processing based on the genre of the game you're playing. Something to keep in mind about the QN85B though is that it doesn't have an anti-reflective coating, so it may not be the best choice for a room that gets a lot of light. So what makes this different from the QN85A from last year? To start, there's Dolby Atmos compatibility. It handles light bloom better and shows more detail in darker scenes for an overall better picture quality. 
You can calibrate the picture with a smartphone. It gets the updated Tizen operating system homepage, and it's got four HDMI 2.1 inputs instead of just the single 2.1 from the 85A. The one thing that isn't as good on this year's model is the light reflection. If you're looking at a TV for a bright room, you'll wanna probably go up to the 90B. Otherwise, this is better than the QN85A in every other significant category. The 85B is a great option for a room where you can control the ambient lighting. It handles motion really well. It's an excellent TV for next-gen gamers, and having Dolby Atmos gives you the ability to have a fully immersive experience with the right sound system. Its cost is on the higher side, but for a mini LED TV that looks this good, it's not overpriced. If you're thinking about picking one of these up, be sure to contact the experts here at Apt for our most current pricing and for help with any other questions you might have. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.